Welcome back to the third video on cytotoxicity. In this video, we are going to discuss the meaning of cytotoxicity. In our last video, we discussed how to conduct cytotoxicity assays. We usually need to determine the lethal concentration or calculate the levels of LC, LC50, LC20, and LC10. We shall use the determined LC values to select concentrations for certain study of the biomarkers, signaling pathways, and mechanisms. <clears throat> of course, we also need to select several time points. Both the dose response and time course are important. The dose determines the levels of poisons and the time course affect the drug clearance and metabolic rates. How do we obtain the LC values from the toxicity curves? We can conduct linear regression and nonlinear regressions using a probit analysis of the sigmoidal dose response curves. However, we also need to obtain the confidence intervals. All of these calculations can be done with the graph pet prism. You can get a demo package to try at this site. The curves shown here are from my publication from 2008. As you can see, because we can hardly port any regression lines in the sigmoid curves, we need to conduct probit analysis to calculate the LC values. After we have calculated the LC50 values, how are we going to explain or interpret the data? This table shows the data with 95% confidence interval CI, as shown with the range of concentrations for the different metal ions. From here, we can determine that the SJD cells are more sensitive to cadmium and mercury than the other metal ions, that arsenic-5 and chromium-3 are less toxic than arsenic-3 and chromium-6. Of course, we can use standard deviations to compare the data. This graph compares the different metal ions and shows that cadmium is also the most toxic chemical in the common cup primary culture of hepatocytes. The other metal ions shows similar results and except for LC20 or LC10, they all have similar toxicity. The phenomenon of by phasic effects or hermesis is also quite common. At lower doses, high growth is stimulated, whereas at higher doses, a significant reduction in cell growth emerges. The left-hand side shows the effects of alcohol or ethanol, whereas the levels of growth factors such as TGF-beta are shown on the right-hand side. Lower doses can induce growth, but higher doses kill. This example shows the biphasic effects of cadmium ions on a fibrous cell line in a human embryo. The researchers tested three drugs, and the results on the far right top show the drug blocking ERK. 1 2 pathway can eliminate such biphasic effects. Biphasic effects were also found in a hormonal study on the effects of XCG, human chorionic hormone, on the production of testosterone in latex cells extracted from the testes of neonatal rats. A drug called OP octafino showed inhibitory effects only at high doses of 500 to 2,000 nanomolar, whereas low doses stimulate testosterone production. 
In my own research on the toxic effects of brominated compounds in set of L cells, BDE-209 showed no toxic effects on only growth stimulation with negative values on cell death. Here, a compound called CLO include trimazole, shows by basic effects and at doses higher than one micromolar, the cells quickly die. The other chemicals test showed no biphasic or toxic effects. Thus, it is important to choose the right concentration for your experiments. Before you conduct your experiments, you first need to complete the cytotoxicity test. After you have done the cytotoxicity test and determined the dose response and time cost, you may need to select other parameters to study, such as DNA damage, organelles, biomarkers, or cellular link pathways, depending on what you are going to study. You may also wish to study the effects of oxidative stress using the enzyme activity or RNA for gene expression. You may develop your own or use existing reported gene assay systems. One final example from my own work is using the real-time PCR to detect the expression of specific genes, in this case, Silicon p 451 a or C1A. The bottom panel reports the results of the gene assays with the aerial hydrocarbon receptor and the thyroid hormone receptor. The approach you take will depend on the toxicological endpoints that you want to study. In conclusion, in visual studies, can complement in vivo studies because they have no ethical concerns and can be used to quickly screen chemicals. In vitro studies can also test subcellular effects and obtain quantifiable data with the time cost and dose response for better data interpretation, although this can be tricky. Finally, we can use different cell models to study the toxic effects and drug metabolism in specific target cells. Here are some references for further reading on cell culture, the alarm brew assays, and other detection methods. For the take-home exercise, I have chosen this paper published in 2005. In this study, LDH leakage was used to study the cytotoxicity of cadmium on BRL3A red liver cells. How can LDH be used to show cytotoxicity? Interpret the data presented in Figure 1. Table 1 compares the data on EC50 as determined from the MTT and LDH assays of different metal ions including cadmium oxide nanoparticles and other silver and ion nanoparticles. I hope you have enjoyed watching the video biochem videos on cytotoxicity and have learned some of the basic concepts of in vitro study. Goodbye.